Hello, this is a CNC build and it's being designed out of Baltic birch plywood and this is going to be steel rails and this is where we're going to have the linear travel three axes, four motors and it's primarily going to be used to cut wood but plastics and aluminum and other soft metals will be available to be cut as well I'll just go over a little bit of this design I chose this method because A, I can work with wood pretty well and uh, it was a cheaper alternative and B, it's a little bit different from what everyone else is doing so I wanted to see if it would work before doing an aluminum or welded steel setup so I'll just quickly run through exactly what's going on here all this is 18 inch, or I'm sorry, 18 millimeter Baltic birch ply that I've glued up oversized and made laminations of and then come back and jointed it and ripped it down the size so uh, what we have is a very nice material to work with. Um, it's almost void free because it's not the real Russian stuff. It's a import, but uh, it's a whole lot cheaper. Nonetheless, it is solid hardwood plywood, so it is quite heavy. Anyways, on this first rails here, I've glued up three pieces and then run in all my notching, which allows this panel to go together pretty easily. Um, these are the cross braces here, and then I got 45 degrees, which uh, go into each side uh, to lock it in place. I don't have the other braces in right now because I'm just showing you a general overview of how it's assembled, and you'll see the uh, full project later on as we get more into it. Uh, this is all cold rolled steel. It's pretty straight. Um, and uh, these are what these carriages slide on. I got these from CNC router parts. This is an extended carriage. This is a regular size. Um, I would have got all extended carriages, but I got a deal on the small stuff used, so picked those up, saved a little bit of money. The side here, these long pieces, it's your X axis, it's 60 inches long. I'm not going to get quite 60 inches of cut because as the router spindle travels across here, um, as it gets to its limits, it's not going to be able to cut all the way at the end of either side. So we're not going to get five feet of cutting area. That's okay. And then up top here, this is called your Y axis. This is where the, the motor and spindle slides across. Um, and then the Z axis, which isn't in the picture, it is what moves up and down. That's a four inch piece there, 45 inches wide. And these pieces are three inch thick, 60 inches long. Everything is quarter inch thick. Let me tell you a little bit about this. So these little braces that are in here look just like this. I'll just cut these and all the dados that are cut into the side allows everything to snap into place. You can use some glue. And the same thing with these where I slide the cross braces into those slots. Makes it real simple. Now on these carriages here I'm building a platform to raise the gantry up above. The gantry is this part right here, which slides across the x-axis and is responsible for holding the spindle. And eventually it's going to be mounted onto this. So what I've done so far is just glued two 18 millimeter pieces of Baltic birch, virtually three quarter inch stuff, together and it's going to sit on there. And I'm going to end up tapping or cutting a hole, uh, a drill, drilling a hole in this piece of plywood which is going to go down to the tapped holes of these linear slides here, carriages. And everything's going to sit on there and I'm going to have a, a, an upright here which is what that is eventually going to attach to and hold everything into place. This is basically what the linear carriages are. They're solid pieces of aluminum that have been machined out, tapped, and there's bearings on here. We got set screws and then once you put all the bearings on. Uh, you have holes that some of them have been uh, drilled out of alignment. It's a concentric uh, drill hole that uh, you can tighten down it and lock everything into place you know, with the set screws and whatnot. It's a pretty easy setup that allows you to fit it onto these um, pieces of steel and lock everything nice and tight. So it rolls very smoothly um, and there's you know not much uh, deviation as it goes down. That, that's the key is to keep everything square and in alignment. And then this is just one of the pieces you know, similar to this cross bracing that we see right here. I just wanted to show you exactly what it is. So we got two pieces glued up and then I got 
right down the middle, a dado, which fits a 18 millimeter piece of Baltic birch perfectly, and that's, you know, what this thing locks into on both sides, so the cross bracing snaps right into there. And sure, I could have made it look a lot easier or nicer by having stopped dados on both ends, but, you know, for sake of time, I just ran it all the way across. And that's pretty much at the point of where I'm at right now. I got a few other things finished up, but uh, I'll explain those as we get into this project a little more. Now, mine kind of deviates from the normal as far as, um, you know, I, I put this cross brace inset it from the end where most of the machines you see, they have the bracing all the way to the ends and then, you know, the panels all the way in the middle. The reason I did this is you'll see I'm set back about five inches off the edge here, but as my carriages roll forward, I'm going to have a little bit of area where the, the travel will come over this. Now this section here in the middle, I'm going to have inset it a little bit more so I can put in this you know, standard little piece of extrusion, which I can put a clamp on, or, or, or a right angle, or whatever I need to do, and by allowing my router or spindle to come over the front of this edge, I'll be able to put pieces of wood that can stand straight up like this at a 90 degree angle, and then come across and cut dovetails or anything else that I want into the top of the piece. So, just a little extra thing that since I'm building it, I'll just do that, and if it works, great, if not, oh well, not a big deal, I'm only you know, I'm not going to lose any bit of cutting. I can just, I can always just lay a sheet of plywood over this, and you know, still get my full width of cut. But by setting it back there, I'm going to take advantage of a opportunity if it comes about. So that's it for the first time here, and I'll just give you a, a little shot from the back too. Forgot to mention that uh, on this piece, this is this is four pieces that have laminated together, almost three inches thick. And on the back here, I did cut a dado. There's not one cut in the front side. Um, just in case, if I think that it's going to flex at all, I'm going to go ahead and, and put a uh, cross bracing of another piece of wood there at a 90 degree angle to stop it even further. But really, this three inches a piece plus a quarter inch steel, uh, it's not really flexing much at all. And uh, if it did, I don't think uh, the bit would survive. I think that would snap a long time before it's flexed. But since I already got the dado cut in there, I might just throw it in uh, just for the fun of it. It's not going to hurt anything. All right, that's it. So uh, I'll keep you all posted. And uh, as we progress and anything that I change, I'll let you know.